The truth fears no questions. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to In-Depth. Violence, in violence intensified in Libya where gunmen loyal to General Khalifa Haftar stormed the interim parliament that was recently elected to rewrite Libya's constitution and announced its suspension. General Haftar claims that his forces are purging the country of Islamist militias while authorities accused him of staging a coup. What is the future of democracy in the, in the oil-rich country and what's spring for Libya? I will discuss these questions and more with Mr. Mohamed Clay, journalist and political analyst. Hello and welcome, Mr. Clay, to yeah. In Depth. My first question is, the vast majority of anti-Qaddafi forces who overthrew him in 2011 were Salafi uh, Islamists. Uh, most of them were affiliated to Al-Qaeda. But at that time, uh, the United States and the Western countries blessed uh, the overthrow of the government of uh, Qaddafi and also mm -hmm. the brutal uh, murder of uh, Qaddafi. Do you think is it the, the right time now to get rid of the Islamists? Well, first of all, of course, it's the it's the right time. It's always uh, time to get rid of uh, fanatic uh, ideologies, especially when they have uh, when they are very uh, vast in numbers, especially in Libya, where they have uh, advanced weapons and uh, and they are supported politically by certain uh, countries in the region. Uh, we can say Qatar is the number one supporter, whether uh, by finance or by uh, pol politics, and also religion as well. Uh, these same forces that are fighting now in Libya against the government and against the, the army uh, have also fought in Egypt and, have all, and are also fighting in Syria. The, the symbolism of Egypt to, to these groups, to whether we're talking about Al-Qaeda or, uh, or any phonetic uh, mm -hmm. religious groups. Uh, um, uh, of course, we're talking here about the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, since these groups, uh, Ansar al-Sharia and uh, whatever they call them, are supported by the Muslim Brotherhood, which goes back to Qatar and mm -hmm. Al-Qardawi. Uh, but there is a complete silence by the American and Western governments regarding General Haftar's uh, operation against these Islamists. Do you think uh, he is getting any kind of bless or support by these governments? That's what we're. That's what, what I was trying to say. That in Libya, it's not a, a local uh, problem. It's an international problem, uh, a problem that has been escalating between uh, the Saudis and the Qataris, uh, where you have the U.S. government and European governments are standing on the side uh, with the, the Saudis in order to, uh, I would say, control the region, mm -hmm. uh, while as they're trying to uh, put Qatar aside, uh, trying to exclude Qatar from uh, its previous control of the region, where it started working in Syria, Egypt, mm -hmm. and several other countries, in, uh, especially the countries of the Arab Spring. Uh, now we see that there is a great support from the Saudis and the U.S. to Haftar, whether uh, we're talking about uh, military-wise, we're talking about mm -hmm. finance, we're also about talking politi uh, politically. Uh, today uh, we've got uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, Emirates and also recently uh, Algeria. They have closed down their embassies in mm -hmm. order. And I see it as a diversion from, mm -hmm. uh, from Saudi Arabia in order to... Uh, in order people to look aside, look away from uh, their effect on this uh, on this matter and their support to mm -hmm. Haftar. Uh, One of the ma main reasons was uh, to sideline uh, Qatar. But uh, observers are asking uh, many illegitimate questions that both Qatar and Saudi Arabia are basically allies uh, of uh, United States. Why would they uh, have a conflict, such a conflict in the region? They are. They are. Uh, great allies of you they are actually strategic allies for the united states but in the end uh, there is sort of a religious political conflict and who will lead this uh, mm -hmm. region 
I mean, uh, for the past uh, 20 to 30 years, you got KSA as the religious symbol of the Islamic world mm -hmm. and in the region as well, and also as the political and financial uh, leader in this region. Uh, during the Arab Spring, we, ha we had a huge rise for uh, Qatar in the, uh, in the region, whether it's by in several countries, from going from Turkey towards uh, Morocco. Mm -hmm. uh, this has affected the relations of uh, Saudi Arabia with several other countries in the region where uh, Qatar became also a religious symbol of mm -hmm. the, or, or I was maybe would say uh, a religious represented rival. by Qardawi. Exactly, uh, by the support of Qardawi and the uh, emergence of the Muslim Brotherhood in its in its uh, current power right mm -hmm. now, uh, as we have seen in Egypt, where it has became uh, the center of uh, the Islamic world as mm -hmm. standing in a, as a rival for uh, mm -hmm. for Saudi Arabia. Uh, uh, Mr. Kled, do you think the uh, General Haftar has the required force and weapons to eradicate what he calls the Islamist militias in Libya? At, at current time, no, but he has great support from uh, European nations, he has good support, uh, military support from the US, and financial and political support from uh, Saudi Arabia. And he has regional support from Saudi Arabian allies uh, such as uh, Egypt and Algeria. Uh, Recently, uh, there, ha there were talks uh, between Sisi and Haftar that Sisi would support uh, uh, Haftar uh, from the borderlines between Egypt and uh, Libya by placing military forces on those uh, mm -hmm. borders. Uh, and Europeans, it's for their best to support uh, Haftar against these groups since Europeans have, if we could say, backstabbed uh, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, in, South in uh, North Africa. Uh, thus, Libya is the closest uh, African country to uh, the European zone, mm -hmm. and uh, it has easy routes uh, for uh, militants and Islamists to reach uh, European to reach shores. European nations. Thus, making this uh, a big uh, terrorist threat on European nations, especially when we have also uh, Muslim brotherhoods and uh, Muslim Brotherhood groups in uh, certain uh, uh, European country, countries such as France, Germany, UK, and we have seen many threats coming from those groups towards uh, these nations mm -hmm. due to their backstab and their approval of, uh, of what they have called the military coup in, uh, in Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Kled, a colonel uh, loyal to Haftar uh, said he denied uh, the allegations that the move, the military move, was a coup. Uh, in Libya and stated that the parliament has no legitimacy and should hand over the power into a 60 member body that was recently elected to rewrite the constitution in Libya. In your opinion, who is the main uh, country or the main uh, supporter of Haftar? Knowing that Haftar was an army commander during the days of uh, General uh, Qaddafi and he defected during the 80s. Uh, General Haftar's uh, history is uh, sort of interesting, especially during the reign of Gaddafi. He has, he has helped Gaddafi in the coup uh, against King Idris in uh, 1969. And uh, then he was uh, captured during the Libyan Chad War. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Gaddafi disavow disavowed uh, Haftar uh, after he was captured. So this may have created certain rivalry between Haftar and Gaddafi since he has moved to US in uh, in early 90s mm -hmm. and he was trained uh, on by uh, the CIA for several years mm -hmm. he has reemerged again in Libya uh, during the first days of uh, the first Li Libyan revolution against Gaddafi and now he is being uh, blessed and supported by uh, the US government mm -hmm. and uh, you think he is Saudi a rising CC for Libya uh, in the time being, it seems that so. Uh, in the end, uh, his uh, his policy and the policy of Sisi, uh, they uh, they are in peril. Uh, in the end, he is a military uh, lieutenant, and Sisi as well was mm -hmm. a military general. Mm -hmm. So we might see uh, another uh, military uh, reign in uh, Libya after uh, Gaddafi. So if this is not a coup, what do we call it? If uh, a military group are moving closer closer and taking uh, control of governmental institutions well, and the parliament? It is and it's not a coup. 
uh, it's not a coup in a way that the government, this, the current Libyan government has not done anything effective in order to get rid of uh, Islamist uh, group. At the same time, uh, the government uh, is still working with this issue. Uh, it, it's not working with the issue in a proper way. It's still uh, a new government. It, uh, now, the Libya at this time, with this uh, current uh, security uh, status, it needs a military government mm -hmm. in order to get rid of uh, Islamist group. So the even for a temporary. Is security and then to exactly. reconstruct or to build the institutions exactly, of the country. Exactly, because you cannot build a country if you don't have security. Econom econ economy doesn't work, uh, the society won't uh, manage itself. And it is a coup since, uh, well, in the end, it's blessed by one of the most undemocratic uh, regimes in the world mm -hmm. and one of the biggest fake democratic regimes mm -hmm. in the world. We're talking here about Saudi Arabia and the U.S. at the mm -hmm. same time. Thus, uh, it is a coup since they are trying to place a man that they have chosen and mm -hmm. they have trained and financed uh, to put it in power in order to... So it is all orchestrated. Exactly. In a, in a way, if, if, uh, well, if we, we talk about in a, in a conspiracy theory mm -hmm. like... It is a yes, fact. It is, it, is a uh, fact. it is sort of uh, or orchestrated. Well, and about 80 to 70 percent of it. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Kled, before we go to, uh, to our break, Libya's uh, parliament remains split by rivalries with little de democratic reform since the revolution of uh, 2011. What democracy is waiting for Libya? Well... A democracy in a country such as Libya, it's sort of a hard thing to manage because in the end, Libya is uh, its not a democratic state. Even when Gaddafi and uh, King Idris was, uh, was here, it's, uh, it's a state based on tribes. It's a group of tribes that are allocated in uh, a certain uh, geographical spot. Gaddafi managed it well because he knew how to manage tribes. In the end, he was, uh, he was part of a tribe mm -hmm. and he was able to lead all of these tribes and unite them under one mm -hmm. flag. He knew the mentality of his people. Exactly. So a democratic state, uh, such as now with uh, Ali Zaidan, or if possibly in the future, uh, whether if we say during Haftar reign or other than Haftar, a democratic state is not an option for uh, mm -hmm. Libyans because in the end, the social mentality and the traditions beat these uh, sort of modern it's ways of imposing uh, the different relation. ways to all this country. Exactly. Mr. Kled, we have to take a short break. Dear viewers, we have to take a very short break. Don't go away. We will be right back. Britain and France especially were competing with each other. And the film tells the story of the building of the separation wall or the apartheid wall, whatever you want to call it. That the 1% are dominating. The societies that are built for the benefit of very few wealthy people. What you're reading here actually shapes what's happening today. So the, the politics, the double dealing, the backdoor dealings, the, the lies, the blatant lies. Um, and it does that firstly by, in the first half, telling the story of various families um, and uh, how they were expelled from their homes uh, through 1948 and, and then 67. It's called decisive. It's not suggesting that every decision would be perfect or that you'll be able to do it immediately. The crisis of capitalism, the European impasse, the energy shortages, the emerging power of Asia, the economic power of the Arab world, the economic debate, informative, revealing and progressive. It discusses the economic event of the world. Economic debate where the numbers reveal the truth. Welcome back. We are discussing with Mr. Mohamed Elet the recent security situation in Libya. Mr. Elet, uh, how do you think the failure of democratic system in Libya would affect on the unity of the country itself. Well, as we said uh, uh, before the break, that Libya is uh, is a group uh, of tribes 
united on, in a one geographical spot. Uh, there has been uh, an article uh, about five to six months ago from American newspaper that have placed uh, the status quo of the Middle East and what it might be in the future. future. Uh, there were several parts of uh, the Middle East and uh, North Africa that have been uh, divided into certain uh, smaller nations. Uh, Libya was cut in half between East and West because uh, historically Libya has been, there has been feuds between uh, the eastern part uh, mm -hmm. of uh, Libya, which is uh, mostly uh, controlled by Benghazi, mm -hmm. and uh, you've got the western part. Uh, and as you said, this, most of these uh, feuds were coming from uh, tribes and traditions and the rivalry between both and uh, the, the love of occupying certain mm -hmm. uh, resources and more lands. Uh, this was also evident uh, during the reign of King Idris and then Qaddafi was able to uh, manage these uh, issues as, uh, as we've mentioned uh, in order to unite the whole country and take control of all of its uh, resources in order to give the best of uh, these resources towards its nation. But Mr. Led, uh, so with the failure of uh, democratic system in uh, Libya, do you think federalization is a better choice or better alternative to avoid a further chaos and uh, disintegration of the country? In a way, yeah, but in the end, federalization also uh, divides the country into several provinces and uh, counties, but uh, it's better to have a divided country under one command, such as we've seen in the U.S. or uh, in UAE, than to have uh, two separate regimes that are uh, that will be and for sure there will be constant feuds, constant constant battles, especially when uh, most of the resources of Libya are placed in the eastern side uh, of the country, while as the west it has uh, it has a big amount of uh, gold mines and diamonds, uh, the eastern side has most of the oil and the gas. And uh, until now, we've seen oil is, uh, is more important to the current uh, mm -hmm. situation in uh, the Middle East. Thus, this will, as I said, this will create more feuds between both sides, as we've seen also in uh, the Sudani mm -hmm. experiment between the yes, North the and the South. Exactly. Partition. Uh, Mr. Oled, why do you think the democratic experiences are failing in the Arab world? Is it because we are not ready for democracy or there are foreign hands preventing the creation of uh, democratic systems? This goes from a uh, from political point of view. Yes, there are foreign hands that are trying to take control of the current political regimes of uh, each and every country of the Middle East. They might uh, divide a country into several uh, sects with regardless if they place real borders or virtual ones uh, as we've ha as we have here in uh, Lebanon mm -hmm. during the civil war uh, or as we have real borders between in UAE uh, and also uh, we've seen that there are there is a certain way of controlling the the Arab world from Western governments mm -hmm. especially from the US and uh, Germany and the UK uh, b whether by political or uh, by economical or cultural uh, uh, cultural uh, issues, while as from a social point of view, as I've said that the Arab world is most by most of it it's a group of tribes, mm -hmm. and we've seen this evident in whether in the Gulf or in uh, North Africa, in the Middle East, such as Syria and uh, the Lebanon. Lebanon we have it's the sects. Exactly, it's uh, it's an, on a lesser scale. Um, also, we could add that the history of uh, this region, uh, it's evident that it has been controlled, it has the one-man rule. And we could start this from uh, the rise of Islam uh, in, uh, in old Yemen, uh, where it has been controlled from uh, Persia to Morocco and Andalusia by one man. And then we have the Umayyads, the Fatimids, and so on. Mm -hmm. Then we had the Ottoman Empire that controlled most of this region also by the rule of one man. So it's hard, but until now, uh, we, are, we were not able to have our own independence, our own government, even if they said that during the mandate of the French and uh, the British, although it was an occupation, not a mandate, we still, we still rely on these governments. In Lebanon, we say here, France is, uh, is our mother, because in the end, our constitution is still French. 
even in Libya, their constitution, their whole political system is, is still occupied by mm -hmm. uh, several European countries and their resources. And maybe and some society. of the values of the people who are living here still uh, by exactly. the, it's French and American. Exactly. Mr. Elliot, historically, eastern part of Libya and especially Benghazi uh, was under uh, the influence of Egypt. This is historically. Do you think Sisi has any role uh, in the ongoing fight in Libya? Uh, a direct role, no. I think uh, Sisi, since now he has uh, allegiance to uh, Saudi Arabia, especially and the Emirates as well, after they have funded uh, their campaign on a very large scale and they are supporting him in several ways, and they also have blessed him uh, with, uh, with the military coup mm -hmm. as uh, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, places it. Mm -hmm. uh, and direct financial money. Exactly. As well. And uh, also in Saudi Arabia, we've seen uh, recently in the past few days during the, ele the foreign elections uh, of the Egyptians to, to the Egyptian uh, uh, presidential elections, uh, Saudi Arabia uh, has been promoting Sisi uh, in front of the Egyptian embassy there. So, uh, as we've mentioned in the beginning of this episode, that uh, KSA has a big role in Libya in order to take control of whether politically or uh, in a military w uh, way the northern Afri Not sure North Africa. Africa. Thus, it has uh, this very strategic, and uh, Egypt is a very strategic country in uh, the Arab world uh, because it has the biggest uh, number of uh, people, and it's also the position of Egypt is a very strategic mm -hmm. position. It's, uh, it's sort of a connection though, between the East and the West of the Arab world. Thus, taking control of Libya must pass through Egypt. And uh, we have seen the, the great support of Sisi to uh, Haftar's uh, military campaign against the, uh, or proposed military campaign against the uh, Islamic groups mm -hmm. after Sisi has also done the same campaign against uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. Mr. Elliot, uh, what about the United States and the Western governments? Aren't they responsible for the chaos in Libya? Ever since the beginning of uh, the first revolution against uh, Gaddafi, they were responsible for this revolution. Uh, there have been several documentaries and videos and uh, news articles about uh, the intervention of the U.S. and the European countries in the first revolution. Uh, before the NATO occupation, mm -hmm. uh, the Islamist groups there were non there were non Libyans who are who were fighting the Gaddafi regime. Uh, in the beginning, yes, I would say that there were there were rights that people uh, were missing. There were freedoms uh, stripped away from them by the Gaddafi regime. That's that's a fact. But uh, the ones who were fighting Gaddafi, they were not Libyans. They were uh, we've seen many photos as well of uh, CIA agents and uh, American mm -hmm. U.S. generals that were training these, uh, these rebels. Journalists, uh, between quotations and, uh, as well. And journalists as well. And there were also some journalists, and uh, uh, especially from Al Jazeera, that were uh, trying to, uh, I would say, make these protests, make these uh, conflicts between the Gaddafi army and uh, mm -hmm. the rebels. Uh, and now uh, the NATO strike uh, was not fully approved from uh, the UN and uh, as we've seen that a lot of uh, resources that have been stripped away from Libya, especially towards Italy, Germany, UK and France. Uh, the US has benefited a lot f uh, from this and now this uh, support to get rid of the Islamist group is mm -hmm. also comes comes from the uh, rivalry between uh, the Saudi Arabia and uh, Qatar, since Saudi Arabia now is a is a strategic uh, ally to uh, to the U.S. in the in the region, since it has, now it has control uh, of most of the issues of the re of the region mm -hmm. uh, from uh, Syria towards uh, towards Algeria. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can also add to that. Uh, that now the U.S. Uh, with the current turmoil in uh, Libya is benefiting from the oil fields, it's benefiting from uh, the gold, uh, that's the, the vast uh, gold mines that are in Libya. In the end, the NATO strike has done a very, criti has done a very critical uh, attack on the Libyan Central Bank. Mm -hmm. The Libyan Central Bank was not uh, related or connected to the World Bank, which is in a way or another uh, controlled by the U.S. and the U.K. Exactly. 
uh, Gaddafi had a plan to make a new de Libyan dinar, Golden. which would uh, which would uh, well, destroy the U.S. dollar mm -hmm. because of its uh, because of its price mm -hmm. and its uh, weight uh, and currency. Uh, he was also planning end, to make a golden currency. Exactly, as well. which is uh, related to the gold, the, the vast gold mines of uh, Libya. The, do, the dollar does mm -hmm. not is not worth even the ink on uh, on the paper mm -hmm. because it's not related uh, to the uh, to the gold. It's only printed on paper. Mm -hmm. Mr. Olet, in few in one minute, mm -hmm. uh, what what about Russia? What role uh, Russia should or have done to avoid this situation in Libya? Well, Russians sadly ha were too late to uh, to act towards uh, Libya. There were uh, there were several uh, issues that were concerning the Russians, such as uh, neighboring Ukraine and uh, Syria and Iran. But uh, when Haftar uh, decided to do the military coup, it was uh, supported, uh, as I said, uh, by weapons and mm -hmm. a huge arsenal from Germany, UK, and uh, the US financially from Saudi Arabia. While as Russians, they have, uh, they have cut their uh, military support mm -hmm. uh, as it was agreed uh, during the Gaddafi reign. They have cut their military supports and funds uh, to support uh, Haftar's mm -hmm. uh, military campaign. Thank you very much, Mr. Oled, for your great analysis. It is always our pleasure to have you on Intelligent Thank TV. You. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our show for tonight. Our thanks for watching. Salam alaikum.